Hello, so I really wanted to do something to really calm everyone's nerves and kind of provide some relief and um, since I couldn't pay all your bills, um, I decided to put together, you know, a little project where I tell like black folk tales um, against the background of the ocean. I hope everyone will enjoy this. Um, most of these folk tales say they're either Afro Latinx or Caribbean, but we know that the root is Africa. These are African uh, folk tales, and a lot of them are specifically Nigerian. I'm going to be starting with Anansi the Spider. So this story is titled. Anansi and the Yam Hills. Once in a before time, there lived an old woman who had magical powers. Her name was Five. She was also so evil that some people called her a witch. Five hated her name. No one knows why her parents named her the number five. When she was a child, other children would make fun of her name. Sometimes, when she was with an earshot, they would look out the corner of their eyes and giggle as they said, Give me five! <laughs> they would slap their hands with a quick handshake and burst out laughing. This taunting always made Five angry. When she grew up, Five decided to put an end to the name calling. So she created a weird spell. Anyone who says five will drop dead. Then she changed her mind. From this day on, anyone who says five will disappear. This spell immediately caused a problem in the country. No one could say that number again without disappearing. Children could no longer recite their five times tables. People had to drop the word five from their vocabulary. In Five's village, the unlucky number was no longer 13. Once a customer asked the merchant, how much is that blue shirt? That shirt is five Suddenly there was a loud swoosh before the merchant could finish his sentence. He disappeared right in front of the dumbfounded customer's eyes. A crafty spider named Anansi lived in Five's village. He had heard about the witch's spell. Times were very hard. Anansi was not a farmer and he had no food at all to eat. His wife and children were starving. Since Anansi was small and not a very good worker, he could only rely on his brain to get whatever he needed to survive. He said to himself, things are tough, boy. I must make this witch's spell work for me. Anansi went to the road that led to the village's marketplace. He chose a spot on the side of the road where everyone on the way to the market would have to pass. There, near a large tree, he decided to pile up the five mounds of the rich brown soil. These mounds he called yam hills. In the top of each yam hill, he planted an African yellow yam. Then he drove a stake next to the yam, which its vine could grow. Anansi carefully watered the yams until each one began to sprout. Anansi made a web-like hammock in the tree and patiently waited for someone to come by. Each morning, after each yam shoot had poked its head out of the mound, Anansi sat down next to his yam hills. Soon, Brother Dog came by on his way to the market. Dog balanced a banquet basket of sweet-smelling fruits on his head as he walked down the road. Good morning, Brother Dog, said Anansi in a sugary voice. I know that you are busy and I feel stupid. I am not an educated man like you. Would you help me to count how many yam hills I have planted here? You should have gone to school to learn how to count. Brother Dog said grumpily as he walked away from Anansi towards the market. 
Anansi climbed it upon the tree and waited. The next person to come by was Brother Bull. He carried a large basket of fruits on his head. Good day, bro, Bull, Anansi said in a sad voice. Could you just spare me one minute, Anansi begged. What can I do for you, Anansi, bro, Bull asked. I was a yuki and sickly child. Yuki means small. So my parents could not send me to school. I never learned my ABCs. I planted all these yam hills. Can you help me count them? But of course, Anansi, Brobo replied. You have one, two, three, four, five. And as he said that number, Brother Bull disappeared into thin air. The basket of sweet, ripe fruits that he had been carrying on his head fell to the ground. Anansi snatched up the basket of fruits and rushed home to eat them all. For a time, Anansi did very well tricking some passerby into counting his yam hills. He grew fat from the baskets of food he had gathered. He had tricked brothers Turtle, Owl, Mongoose, Hare, Peeny Weeny, and the Firefly, and even tough Bro Scorpion. Miss Ganea Fowl was a nice young mother of newly hatched children. She could not say no to anyone. She and her husband shared the chore of selling their produce in the village. That day it was her turn to go to the marketplace. She loaded up her hand basket and headed for the market. As she got closer to the yam hills, Anansi was nowhere in sight. Just as she was about to pass yam hill number four, Anansi the spider lowered himself down from his perch in the tree. He called out in his sugary voice. Good morning, Miss Ganea Fowl. Could you help me with the problem? Of course, Anansi, the polite Miss Ganea Fowl said. I have these yam hills here and I don't know how to count. Would you help me, please? Miss Ganea Fowl, who had seen Anansi's trick, Bro Scorpion, walked over to the last yam hill and climbed up top of it. She said, You have one, two, three, four and the one I'm standing on. What? What are you doing? That's not the way you count, Anansi shouted angrily. What do you mean, Anansi, Miss Ganea Fowl said. I don't know of any number called the one I'm standing on. Start again, Anansi ordered. Miss Ganea Fowl began again. You have one, two, three, four, and the one I'm standing on. That is not what you are supposed to say, Anansi shouted even more angrily. Well, if you are so smart, what am I supposed to say, Miss Ganea Fowl asked. Anansi shouted, you are supposed to say one, two, three, four, five, oops. Suddenly, Anansi disappeared, leaving Miss Ganea Fowl with all the loot he had gotten from tricking his victims. The Jamaican moral of this story is greedy choke puppy or a greedy puppy will soon choke. Have you ever seen a puppy eat so fast and so much that they may sometimes choke? Similarly, it was Anansi's greed that got him into trouble. I really hoped you enjoyed this story um, and it relaxed you a bit. For more, join the Blackina Insiders Club and follow Blackina on Instagram and sign up for our newsletter at blackdinamedia.com.